month at 7 p.m. and serves as the city's policymaking and legislative body. Each meeting is governed by Robert's Rule of Order unless those guidelines conflict with city ordinance or charter. City council meetings offer an opportunity for citizens to speak directly to their elected representatives. Those in attendance are invited to address the council during the public input segment at the beginning of the agenda. At that time, any issue that is not subject to formal action later in the agenda can be addressed. Testimony that concerns a resolution or an ordinance's second reading is only allowed when those specific agenda items are being addressed by the council. When addressing the council, citizens should speak directly into the microphones at the podium and state their names for the record after being recognized by the chair. To accommodate and respect all viewpoints, citizen comments are limited by ordinance to no more than five minutes each. Comments should be respectful and focused on providing new information that will benefit the council's deliberative process. By city ordinance, all remarks must be addressed to the city council as a body and not to any city council member, including the mayor. The chair reserves the right to limit the number of speakers. City council meetings are broadcast live on CityLink and online at SiouxFalls.org. Information regarding the city council, its committees, meetings, briefings, and members is available by visiting SiouxFalls.org slash council or by calling the council office at 605-367-8085. Thank you for your interest in Sioux Falls City Government. The chair reserves the right to limit the number of speakers. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, December 5th, and we certainly appreciate your uh, your presence, whether you're here in person or watching us on, on TV tonight. We will start our meeting by introducing you to your City Council. Council Member Staley? Here. Erickson? Here. Erpenbach? Here. Kylie? Here. Neitzer? Here. Rolfing? Here. Selberg? Here. Starr? Here. Councillors, thanks so much for your service. Thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, in the city of Sioux Falls, we a lot to make it that way. Bless them, bless their families, give them a Merry Christmas. Give us guidance that only you can give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Folks, again, welcome to tonight's City Council meeting. Well, we really appreciate it. Uh, I know that there are some of you who would like to discuss a topic later on involving uh, mixed-use parking. We certainly uh, are, are looking forward to that. Uh, however, it's also another opportunity to engage the Council on other topics uh, that are not on the agenda. Uh, if you'd like to just come forward, introduce yourself to the people of our city by introducing us with your name. And then uh, we would ask that you keep your comments uh, uh, limited to five minutes or less. And uh, just try to be as respectful and professional of the, of the body as you can. Welcome. As respectful and professional of the, of the body as you can. Welcome. Scott Harrisman, Sioux Falls. <clears throat> Over the past uh, couple of weeks since the last time I was here, I decided I'd start keeping track of... Um, what the train business has been doing in this town and close to where I live. About four blocks south of the old switching yard, it looks like the railroad has decided to create a new switching yard, um, which is confusing me because we gave them $27 million to build a new switching yard out of town. But they've been keeping and storing cars just, just uh, blocks south of Avera, about four blocks, only about four blocks, or north of Avera, about four blocks south of where the old switching yard was. Um, they are holding trains there. They are keeping up to 20, 30 cars there, storing them there. They are keeping tankers. They are switching cars there. Um, last week, I was blocked four days in a row at noon over the lunch hour on Cliff Avenue from the trains, switching and backing up and going back and forth. Um, today, uh, 
they were switching at five of they were doing the trains at five o'clock um, this is pretty normal occurrence um, I, I, mean, I guess I'm really confused why we paid sixty two dollars a square foot gave twenty seven million dollars to the railroad to move the switching yard and they're still continuing to switch only four blocks away from where they moved um, I don't know why this wasn't negotiated in the deal I don't know why we didn't tell them that when we wanted them out of downtown that meant that they couldn't I, I realize they have to run through downtown but uh, that they're continuing to switch cars downtown they're continuing as I understand there's a scale there they're continuing to weigh the cars downtown they haven't moved out of downtown this 27 million dollars we took from the federal taxpayers which I call pork we didn't accomplish the rail traffic switching traffic thing that we said we were going to um, and I, I just don't understand how we can give the railroad that much money and they continue to switch the cars downtown um, why can't they switch them in their new switching yard um, as for the sixty two dollars a square foot <laughs> that's a, a lot of money to pay um, I was checking real estate commercial real estate the average price of commercial real estate and you got to understand this is this is stuff that's ready to haul dirt off of or ready to build this isn't what we were handed a bunch of railroad tracks that we got to clean up yet um, it's about two dollars and fifty cents to about seventeen dollars a square foot we paid sixty two dollars a square foot there is no way we are ever going to get our money back from that. And the trains continue to switch their cars downtown. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Folks, anybody else? Welcome. Good evening. My name is Heather Pastor. Um, I want to start out to mention a situation that I kind of sort of ran into last week. Uh, this lady right here approached me on the street to tell me that, um, well, the meeting wasn't going to be last Tuesday, this Tuesday. Apparently, she said that you said that I was going to be cut off my speaking time. Why is beyond me? Because I just want to clear the air by saying one thing. First off, my fiancé is not here because there is a miracle after all. He finally got a job, so he's at work right now. Um, I wasn't saying the same thing that the other people were saying. I can clarify that my situation is different than other people's. I am still very much getting my abilities held against me, and I just want to say that I don't agree on your guys' decision on the on the parking thing or even the downtown bus stop. Come to think of it, I was I was physically assaulted at that bus stop, that same bus stop, where the cops did nothing about it. I don't think that people really know what it's like for a person like me uh, to get the runaround game and to get uh, turned away. And I just want to say that, you know what, I just don't agree on your guys' decisions on things because, you know, I guess, I guess if you live a good life and you have big money and big fancy cars and you have it good, then you don't know what it's like to walk in somebody else's shoe. The reason why me and my fiance have to pay out of pocket out of the only income we get for hotels is because we cannot get in nowhere. There's no way I can, we don't even have housing anymore. Our housing was taken away from us and it's just, it's discrimination. That's all I have to say. So you guys have a good one. Thank you. Welcome. <coughs> Folks, if anybody wants to speak, just come on up forward, please. Uh, welcome. Bruce Danielson, Sioux Falls. So the last few weeks have been kind of interesting. I was up here speaking and uh, I got shouted down and uh, there's been a lot of response from just being able to try and talk up here and the way I was treated. And I just wanted to let everybody know that words have consequences. I've watched over the last couple weeks as this topic we're going to be discussing later in the, in the show happens that uh, there's been a great deal of acrimony, rancor, there's been accusations that uh, people are liars and that's and I'm just talking about members of the dais in front of me that have been saying this. We have a problem as citizens here in Sioux Falls of trying to understand what's going on in this town because we've lost trust in this body. 
We want to see something happen here. We've been working really hard to inform people. We'd like more transparency, but I, apparently transparency is too big a word for this group to understand. And then we run into problems with ethics. All we're doing is asking questions, <clears throat> and we get shouted down. We recently heard a public speaker at, at a meeting saying, we aren't here to entertain, we're here to inform. Why do you reject us when, when we try to inform? I see people playing with paperwork, I don't know, playing with your phones while we're up here, and it's a continuing process. Several of the people I'm actually watching here aren't even watching me or watching any of the other people that have been up here. So some of the people in front of me don't even try to return our phone calls or emails. I don't know. Why don't you? You know, there's, there's 175,000 people in this town, and we'd like to have some answers. We'd like to be able to have a, a decent discourse. But this group seems to think they know everything, we have directors in this town that don't even want to tell the truth when they're up here. They have little, you know, they, because they, they don't want to tell you what's going on, that they really know what's going on in their departments or in their decisions, because they don't want to have an argument during a city council meeting. This is a public forum. We need to have these discussions. It's hard to have a dialogue when members of the dais don't even try to be part of our dialogue. Thank you. Sir, did you want to speak? Come forward, please. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council? Welcome. Hi, I'm Stephen Ciano. Uh, I also had an exotic pet. There's a spider. Um, I told somebody I had a spider, and uh, it's unassuming. It doesn't bother anyone. Uh, it would grab some insect that would be uh, just innocently passing by, and splat hit it with some some web and it was really interesting to watch didn't bark or anything like that i mentioned it to somebody on the bus and uh and i was asked if i named it i was like why would i name it it's not going to jump up on my lap if i call it so what's the point well yeah i'm all for whatever uh animals not going to uh interfere with someone else now really i was interested in presenting to you something uh today a thought about um the difference between public and private, criminal and civil, um, and uh, with privacy is secrecy. Uh, former uh, Cook County uh, public uh, guardian, Patrick T. Murphy, was quoted as, uh, as uh, saying that the secrecy that is uh, supposed to protect children actually harms them, and he later became a judge. So somebody's listening somewhere to the truth. But um, privacy is only, um, it can't be extended to the public, um, like the government. It's not lawful. There are, uh, There is American law, there is natural law. We have a country that's supposed to be based on natural law. If you read the uh, Declaration of Independence, it's a natural law document. It's saying we are all equal. There is nobody superior than anyone. And there are many in history who have said the same thing and have been um, injured in various ways and killed for saying such. And I would hope that we in this country and in this city would do better. Um, I have been different since I was young. I had there are some people that came up here saying they were in eighth grade. I was never in eighth grade. I skipped. I skipped ahead through eighth grade. And then I tested out early from high school. Um, so I, I don't know what that's like. Oh, well, we're all different. Um, Jesus was a great teacher. And yet, unfortunately, his anti-religionist um, direct connection with the Almighty has been lost in religion that was somewhat based on him as uh, human, human uh, rights activist Gandhi said I like your Christ I don't like your Christians you Christians are so unlike your Christ and he also said as I recall uh, he's quoted as saying uh, 
Anyone who doesn't think that religion is politics doesn't know religion. And uh, there's a lot of interesting quotes, but I see that Jesus taught much the same as Socrates, who said, uh, the unexamined life is not worth living. Uh, and it's the golden rule that rules. Thank you. Folks, did anybody else want to engage the council? 244 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, the city, authorizing the issuance of its sales tax revenue bonds, authorizing the use of the proceeds thereof to pay the cost to design, construct, equip, and furnish a new parking structure to include approximately 520 parking spaces and related improvements to be located at 110 South Mall Avenue in the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, together with Site Street, site street and drainage improvements, landscaping and related facilities and equipment, and the cost of issuance thereof, and pledging a portion of the sales and use tax proceeds of the city to the payment of said sales tax revenue bonds, fixing the terms of such sales tax revenue bonds, authorizing the execution and delivery of a second supplemental indenture to an amended and restated indenture of trust between the city and the First National Bank in Sioux Falls, and authorizing the sale, execution, and delivery of such sales tax revenue bonds in an amount sufficient, one, to fund a deposit of bond proceeds in an amount... Good evening, City Council. Darren Ketchum, Director of Community Development. Thanks for having us here tonight. Uh, tonight, uh, Finance Director Tracy Turbeck and I, and along with other members of our team, are here to present the mixed-use parking ramp for your consideration. Just to recap the scope of this project that we're asking for these bonds, uh, this is a historic $50 million investment in our downtown that will be an iconic 13-story mixed-use development. $20.6 million of this development is to pay for a public parking structure that will have 525 public parking spaces. The private development is estimated at $30 million and will be a hotel and approximately 37,000 square feet of commercial space. The city budget for this project, as I stated, is $20.6 million. Here's a more detailed breakdown of the city project budget. The budget consists of three categories, ramp construction, site improvements and administration, and professional services and contingency. Next, I'd like to ask Finance Director Tracy Turbeck to come forward and talk about the bond ordinance and the capital program amendment. Thank you, Darren. The uh, bond ordinance is item number 44 on your agenda tonight. The uh, information on the slide should look very familiar to you. We've been through this a uh, number of times. The bond ordinance, uh, first and foremost, authorizes the issuance of bonds for this project. Uh, it also sets out the parameters within which the bonds will be issued. That includes the maximum bond amount, the maximum interest rate, and the latest final maturity of any bonds that are issued. The, uh, the ordinance also establishes the use of the bond proceeds, which include uh, a deposit of the construction fund uh, in the amount not to exceed $16.5 million. It also includes funding for a debt service reserve, as well as uh, funding the cost of issuance and capitalized interest, uh, if, if any. The ordinance does allow for the bonds to be issued in either taxable or tax-exempt form, as I've mentioned to you before, our expectation is that they will be issued as taxable bonds uh, for the purpose of, of maximizing the uh, flexibility of managing the ramp once it is constructed. Uh, lastly, it's important to note that the bonds will be secured by the second penny sales tax revenues. However, uh, the expectation is in, in the uh, forecast that we've, uh, we've made uh, do indicate that the parking system will generate sufficient revenues to make all bond principal and interest payments. <clears throat> I'd also mention that uh, uh, with us tonight, uh, we do have our bond counsel, Bruce Bonjour, uh, development agreement. Uh, the development agreement provides detail regarding the relationship between the city and legacy developments. It includes the development agreement, lease, and operation and easement agreement. The term of this agreement is for 80 years, and legacy will pay the city $1 million for the development rights. All of these funds will be received by the city prior to Legacy having occupancy of their hotel. The breakdown of that is $150,000 upon ex effective date of this agreement. 
$350,000 prior to them starting construction on their portion of the project, that eighth floor and above, and the improvements in the south portion of the property. And then prior to them getting occupancy and actually being able to, to conduct business, they have to make the final payment of $500,000. As I've stated previously and again last week, city employees and officers and their spouses are barred from having a financial interest in this development. This is spelled out in multiple locations throughout the development agreement and lease. And our team is committed to delivering this project in the highest and most ethical manner possible. Uh, City Council, it has been uh, our pleasure to, to work with you for the last uh, number of years on this project. This is something that has taken a ton of effort and, and our team, I'm so proud of the work they've put together. But to, just to summarize this, the need for this investment has never been greater and will only grow as our downtown continues to thrive. This is a $50 million investment in downtown that will not only provide 525 publicly available parking spaces, but will also support new revenue for local and state governments, support the creation of new jobs, and add amenities in our downtown. All of this will be accomplished without, without the use of taxpayer dollars. Thank you once more for the opportunity to present this momentous development uh, for your consideration. Our team is here to answer any questions you may have, and I respectfully ask for your favorable action tonight on these related items. Darren, thank you. Folks, uh, this is a second reading, so what that means is that you have the opportunity to engage the council on this particular topic, uh, these particular items. As uh, Darren has discussed, this is a topic uh, that we've uh, discussed. Uh, there's been a lot of due diligence and debate over at least the last three years on this uh, on this topic. Um, counselors have received emails, phone calls, uh, a bevy of face-to-face -face conversations, uh, both for and against. Um, at the same time, we certainly do appreciate you all being here and uh, wanting to engage uh, the council on on this topic. Uh, we love the fact that you're involved in, in city government. Um, if you do want to speak tonight, just a couple of things that we'd, we'd recommend. First of all, we'd ask that you come up to the, um, to the front chairs, uh, if you don't mind, so that you're, when, the first, when the next speaker is done, you can just come right on up. Um, David, please sit down until I'm ready for you. We'd ask you to come to the front uh, so that when one speaker's done, the, the next person then can, can continue. Um, all we ask is state your name so the people of Sioux Falls know who uh, we're engaging tonight. Uh, we'd ask you to keep your comments less than five minutes. Again, just r remain professional, uh, respectful, and productive. Uh, we all appreciate that, including all the, the citizens of Sioux Falls. Uh, one thing that I will caution you on, uh, good people, is that um, at some point in time, you may start to sense that uh, some of the comments become repetitive in nature, uh, whether it's for or against. Um, I would just respectfully ask uh, that, that you not do that. Uh, the council will also respectfully ask that uh, as well. Um, uh, anything that's new to the conversation that you could add that's different from what you're hearing tonight would certainly, certainly be, be appreciated. Um, so again, welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, who would like to kick this off tonight? Uh, David, why don't you come forward? And uh, uh, state your name and this off tonight. Uh, David, why don't you come forward and uh, uh, state your name and continue. David? Greetings. <clears throat> My name is David Zokaitis, and I'm here to talk about this proposed parking ramp. Now, I've got a strong science background, so when I look at a topic, I try to be objective and clear and just try to figure out what's really going on and why. And I take that kind of perspective at public input here. Hold on a second. Well, my PowerPoint's not working so well.
All right, so I try to be clear and objective, but sometimes a little extra skepticism is valuable. In dealing with the city, I've noticed that we've got some unconstitutional laws that nobody cares about. Um, if police commit assault or perjury, nobody seems to care about that. I note uh, pervasive secrecy, so in this kind of environment, we need to be extra skeptical. Okay. Well, okay, so the goal of this parking ramp complex is to accommodate public parking in downtown. We've got a growing city, we need more parking. So that's the supposed goal of this project. So if we wanted to get more cheap parking, the way to do it would be to expand the existing ramp at 8th and Dakota. Mm -hmm. Chatting with the guys from community development, they tell me that we could get 80 more spaces. Uh, why haven't we talked about that? I mean, if you need more parking spaces, this would be, be the cheapest, fastest way to do it. So instead, the city is proposing this giant construction project. We're going to have a city on the parking ramp as the basis, and then a nice building on top. We're going to build 525 spaces, but 150 of those get leased to the, to the hotel. So that only gives you, effectively, 375 available spaces to accommodate the growing city of Sioux Falls. Now, I've heard that the ramp's going to cost about $21 million. If you divide up how, however many spaces you get, it's either 40000 for constructed space or maybe about 60000 for per available construction public space. And compare that to what this is supposed to cost, and that's a huge discrepancy. So why does this thing cost so much? A couple of reasons. Well, it's a nice, beautiful, new modern ramp, and you've got to support the hotel on top, not just structurally, but aesthetically. It costs more. And then we want the thing to last a long time, so that all adds for extra expenses that the city is due to absorb. Now, Legacy Development wants to lease 150 spaces, but we need to figure out what kind of lease rate they get. Do they lease it at what it costs us to build it, or do they lease it at a different rate? Important consideration. Now, the lease, we need to look at this one a lot more closely. It's supposed to be a million dollar lease, but I've asked Community Development to get the appraisal that this lease is based on. I haven't gotten it. The appraisal is a secret. We can't really trust a million dollar lease. We need to figure out who made the appraisal and what criteria they used. Very important consideration. And then at the end of the lease, 80 years later, what do we do with this thing? Well, the, the thing's only designed for 80 years. At the end of 80 years, we've got a dead building to condemn and remove. And that's the city's responsibility. And then, how do we pick community development? Uh, I mean, how do we pick legacy developments? Secret committee, secret selection process. And I, again, I, I've asked for clarification on that topic and haven't gotten anywhere, so that leads to more skepticism on my regard. And then, oh yes, you know, I, we'll have to admit it's a beautiful building and we need to appreciate the beauty that's there. Now, typically when, when I give these presentations, I like to say we should enjoy life, and no matter how things are, look on the bright side, you'll get a kick out of this next slide. There we go. That's me enjoying life at the recent Parade of Lights. And with that, I bid the city a good evening. Folks, did anybody else want to engage the council on this topic? Welcome. Folks, again, if you wouldn't else want to engage the council on this topic, welcome. Folks, again, if you wouldn't mind coming up to the front chairs, we'd appreciate it. Welcome. Hi everyone, my name is Diane Olson and in the last few days I've, I've had an opportunity to communicate with several of you and I really appreciate it. Um, you were all very kind to provide information that I hadn't had before, links to information, things, presentations I could study and all of this helped me crystallize and articulate the issues that really bothered me the most about this and also the issues or, or the, the aspects of this that I really, really like. So if you want to know the bottom line, I'm for it and I'm against it. Um, 
Like you, I take great pride in Sioux Falls downtown revitalization, and I fully realize that we have serious parking issues that need to be addressed immediately. But I think some of you might be overlooking the recent dramatic increase in the value of our downtown area. Um, with the new development at Falls Park and the east side, as well as the re revitalization of downtown itself, the downtown is now more and more coveted location for businesses to relocate here. It's in demand. This is a major place that businesses want to be a part of. And um, businesses understand that this is an increasingly lucrative area for the foreseeable future, and that translates to a promise of excellent revenue streams for businesses that, that relocate to this location. Businesses understand that. Um, sometimes I think we remember what downtown was 15, 20 years ago, and we base our thinking strategies on that. But what we need to do is lift out of that, see what it is now, see what it is in the next two years, five years, and realize that it's not what it used to be. The values are incredible. Um, businesses understand that. The whole idea of jobs, that's going to naturally happen. It is naturally happening. The idea of a really good tax revenue base from these businesses, that also happens naturally. We don't have to help it. It happens naturally. Um, I love the idea of a mixed-use parking ramp to provide additional uh, locations for businesses. That's a great thing. But understand that the jobs aspect, the, the tax base aspect are things that we don't have to help because that's just going to naturally happen. It has to. We, can't, we couldn't stop it if we wanted to. So any discussion of spending the city's revenue, parking revenue funds to help provide jobs and a big, bigger tax base is really not valid because that naturally happens. That's really not part of this issue. Um, it'll happen regardless. Um, so the mixed-use parking ramp proposal, as I see it today, the proposal as it currently sits, assumes the opposite. It, this proposal centers around the 20.6 million city parking revenue dollars to essentially entice businesses to, in, to come downtown, downtown and inhabit some newly created downtown locations. The amount of city funding is too much. Um, the hotel and, and these other businesses are really the primary benefactor in every regard, in parking, in airspace, in airspace, in location. They would have to pay a lot more if they did this on their own without partnering with the city. They would also be in a far less lucrative location if they didn't partner with the city. Shouldn't they pay a larger premium for these privileges? The current proposal as it sits today is a big lose for the city in terms of our parking and a huge win for these businesses that have the, that are have the promise of these lucrative revenue streams coming in I submit that it needs to be tweaked or adjusted slightly so that it's a win-win for everyone People are up in arms, or some people are up in arms, on the proposal because they think that you may have been tricked with a proposal that solves a problem that we really don't have. These jobs, tax revenue base of these businesses happens anyway. So we're trying to solve a problem that just isn't there, and then it barely solves the problem that we do have, which is we need more parking. Um, and, and all the while we're advertising this as primarily a parking solution. Do you realize that the, the projection is that it will take 13 years for us to pay off this $20.6 million obligation? Diane, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Folks, uh, folks uh, welcome. <coughs> Hi, good evening. My name is Chris Hanmer. Thank you so much, uh, first off, for your service for our city. Um, I want to give a little different perspective. Um, I own two businesses downtown, uh, both of them in the food service industry. Uh, and I just can't stress enough how much 
I love downtown, how much I love our city, and how valuable this project is. She spoke uh, just a moment ago about bringing jobs, bringing things. That's great. It is going to bring jobs to the hotel. It is going to bring jobs in, in the construction. But it's also going to bring people. It's going to bring people to our nightlife. It's going to bring people to our businesses. It is going to bring a uh, sustainable need that our city has and that our city wants to grow. And I use this, this uh, analogy quite often when I'm talking about Sioux Falls. People will travel and people will say, you know, do you have a, where's your entertainment district? Uh, where's your theater district? I'm like, well, you know, it's pretty, pretty cute. We don't quite have meat packing yet. There, there was a place, but it's quite contained. But what I usually say to people is that when we bring people in and we travel, I don't know if there's a council person here that's gone to the corner of 41st and Louise and said, this is the busiest intersection in our state. And they stand there because they're proud of how many people are passing by. They bring them downtown. They show them the heart of the city. They show them where their families can live, where their businesses can grow, where people can live and enjoy the offerings that we have and the charm of our city. And I think that this project is more than a parking ramp and the vision of the council and the community development is also part of that, that, that yes, it will take 13 years to pay off. You know what? It's taken me 10 to pay off my small pastry shop. You know, it's, it's not that long a time when we're getting 80 years out of it. Um, and in disclosure, I am on the board of directors for downtown Sioux Falls. I am on the parking advisory board, and I'm also on the board of Sculpture Walk. So I love our city. I am here for our city. And I encourage you all to try and get this amazing thing built to bring this missing component, this, this, this new thing, uh, this great thing that will help move our city into the future, not just for five years, but for 50 years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Joe Batchelor, president of downtown Sioux Falls. So we've heard some points for and some points against. We're going to hear many more, I'm sure. Um, your job tonight, of course, is to weigh the risk versus the reward. And um, I think that uh, we do have a good reward to risk ratio here, and here's why. The economic impact of this. This parking structure is going to allow for hundreds of additional employees downtown, uh, which will make it an even more enticing place for businesses to locate. Uh, and I want to make sure that we don't shoot ourselves in the foot by limiting the parking supply that we already have for our corporate partners uh, that are part of the downtown community. We want to keep the businesses downtown that we already have. Um, with this parking ramp, parking will be even easier than before by nearly doubling the number of public parking spaces within a block of the downtown core. This will make downtown an easier place to access for shoppers and diners, adding to downtown's potential to generate uh, sales tax revenue. This, uh, the uh, private development portion of this project, um, from what I understand, is projected to add $900,000 potentially in all the various tax revenue streams that it can generate. Uh, and, and you uh, extend that out over the life of this project, we're talking over $72 million. The um, hotel itself, I, I did some of the math. We've got 120 hotel rooms. Hotels like to target an 80% occupancy rate, ideally figure about one and a half guests per hotel room. Over the course of the year, we're talking 52,560 guests. The Americans for the Art did an economic impact report on visitors to Sioux Falls. This isn't just any city, for Sioux Falls. They spend $47.51 per visit. 52,560 visitors per year times $47.51. Uh, we're, we're talking uh, about two and a half million dollars in spending in downtown at local businesses, local businesses that keep those dollars in our community longer. Uh, and, and so that's generating sales tax revenue for the city. And, and if you extend that out over the life of this project, again, holding all variables constant, we're talking $200 million over the life of this project. Significant upside. So there may be some aspects that some don't like about this project, but what is truly at risk? Uh, 
will we have to use the second penny sales tax revenue? That's highly unlikely from what I understand. That's never happened before. We've used the second penny sales tax uh, as uh, collateral in the past. And um, will parking rates increase? Well, parking rates increase periodically over time. That's not new. Prices go up. If they didn't, we'd still be paying a nickel for hamburgers. Uh, it's, it's necessary to compensate for inflation. Should the city be a partner in private development? Well, let's, let's look at where we've come from over the last 10 years. Okay, without public investment, projects like the Downtown River Greenway, uh, the Levitt Shell, uh, TIF financing, and this TIF is not a part of this, as you well know, but with those types of, uh, um, with the public sector facilitating development with these types of tools, We've got Sharapa Place, worth $16.7 million in property value. The Lumber Exchange, $18.5 million. Hilton Garden Inn, $10 million. Washington Square, $28 million. The Uptown redevelopments, like the Cascades, $43.5 million. And the Phillips Lofts at $61 million. We're talking $123 million that's generating 2.5, eventually with some of these that are, um, that are currently uh, taking part in the TIF program, uh, $2.5 million in property tax revenue with these projects. So uh, yeah, maybe some of these projects might happen without the city not getting involved, but how long do you want to wait? I think it is necessary for the city to be involved with this project. So to recap, this project will generate nearly a million dollars in tax revenue a year, two and a half million dollars in local spending at no cost to taxpayers, in my mind, that's oh, pretty thank, good darn. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. Folks, thanks. Folks, anybody else? Welcome. Good evening, Council and Mayor. Laura Hubble. Um, I was kind of late getting down here, you know, so I, I just ignored the intersections that I had to go through. And I just kind of put my hand in from the window and I said to myself, I'm just going to go through this intersection because. I guess I'm shorter than what you thought I was, but um, I, I'll start over. I um, was a little late, late getting here, and by the way, I couldn't find a place to park, so I do understand that the parking issue, but sometimes, like when I was coming here, I just put my hand and just ignored all the intersection laws. Didn't stop for any stop signs, didn't stop for any um, yield signs, but I got here fine. There was no accident and nobody died. Now just hold that thought. Um, of course, there are laws that you must yield to at intersections. And that was figure of speech people. I did obey the traffic laws coming here. Um, but let's say I had I got in a hurry, but didn't get caught, got here fine, no problem. Um, and but, but I disobeyed the law, okay? Now South Dakota has a law. South Dakota has a law that I think is being disobeyed here, and that law is a South Dakota, South Dakota codified law. 6-1-1. The title of it is South Dakota Statutes Concerning Conflicts of Interest for Municipality for Municipal Officials. Excuse me. Um, I'm thinking that, you know, if we have contracts and we're not allowed to know who's involved in those contracts, who's going to benefit from those contracts, we are in effect disobeying the conflict of interest laws. Our, our contracts with this whole project better be completely open Every single investor, every person who gets any kind of um, benefit from this project, the public needs to know about, per law. Um, and if anybody does get a, a public official, a municipal of, official, does get a benefit, those contracts are null and void. Um, it would be horrible if you guys started this project, find out there was a conflict of interest, and then retroactively your contracts are all void. And also, uh, what bothers me are the public-private partnerships. You look up in entities structuring and that type of thing, um, public-private partnerships are all very nebulous. And I, if a business is going to grow, I'm just thinking it could grow without the, the, the public part of it. If, if, the, if the, a business wants to grow a business, let it grow. We don't need the, the people involved in that. In fact, that's blurring the lines. There is a, the lines that define business, there are lines that define government. And I think in this situation, as with most 
public-private partnerships, we are blurring those boundaries. And I also have a problem with the, the legacy company. I looked on their, their website, and we have some guy with information systems, a medical doctor, an interior design and landscaper, a mortgage originator and performer at Catfish Bay, and a marketing expert. I'm really not too convinced that these people, who do not have a good record, by the way, should be part of something that I, as the public, want to partnership with. So I'm asking you that one, you make the public, you make the names public of the investors in the contracts, all the contracts, and don't resolute those that responsibility away. That you stop using public-private partnerships. If this is a good deal, then business should be able to do this without blurring the lines between government and business. And that if this was a city-initiated venture, the parking, that you show us that it was an open bid process and that many companies were allowed to bid on a parking ramp. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Folks, in, folks, again, if anybody else wants to speak, just come up to the front. Welcome, sir. Good to have you here. Todd McInerney. I'm a mechanical engineer here in Sioux Falls. I uh, office out of the 300 building uptown here. Uh, I've been in Sioux Falls doing the construction industry for over 25 years. Um, I haven't been much involved in the city since I've been here, uh, but uh, I think it was uh, Councilman uh, Starr that had brought up. We've been talking about this parking ramp for 10 or however long, three years, and then he goes, but this is going to come out to people as the first time they ever saw it. And I'm one of those people. I saw this and I was like, wow, we're involved in this huge building. I think the building's great. It's beautiful. I hope it goes. I think it's great. But I actually got to the point where I was concerned with the process. And I just wanted to do something about it, so I thought I'd come down and at least address uh, the council. I came to my first meeting uh, two weeks ago, and I'd like to say that you guys have a thankless job. I mean, the stuff that you have to listen to and put up with is, I mean, I, I appreciate it. So, But in any case, I'm here to do the exact same thing. Uh, and I hope... All it is is maybe to inform you as to maybe some of the things I've seen as someone that's been in the construction industry, you know how the games are played, uh, express some concerns with some of the processes that we're going through. Uh, and then also uh, maybe tell you where, how I've uh, maybe come past uh, some of the concerns that we did have, or I did have to begin with. And I think a lot of them have been addressed uh, in some of the last meetings and stuff like that. I've, I've gone ahead and I, I, I sort of went through all the contracts. Uh, I also reviewed some of the things that have been presented for constructions. And at first, some of the concerns that I had were obviously the price, but I think that's been explained away by this gentleman here on some of the additional costs for site development, etc. That went away. Um, the other concern is I'm a, uh, an opponent to construction management at risk. I think it is uh, it's very high, easy to hide things. There's a lot of uh, you can they can negotiate without having to get bids on certain things. There's a lot of things that I think are wrong with that process. Um, however, looking at this and how it's the size of it based upon. Well, both the size and then also the fact that we got all these parties involved, it is probably the only way to do this thing. Um, so that went away. One of the other concerns that I had is uh, splitting up the expenses. I, I understand and I've, I've looked through what the requirements are for each individual as to who's paying for what. And I think they've done a tremendous job trying to split that out. I mean, they're even saying a third of the elevator for these guys, two thirds of the elevator for these guys. And, I, and it looks as if everybody is doing due diligence to try to get uh, a very fair process. Now, there's some things that, you know, you just can't split out. I mean, uh, you're the foundation for a much larger building. You're paying for the piers, you're paying for the foundation. There's a lot of money involved in that, but I think that that's the city's investment and I think that that's something that we do. And they're even, they've split out like the front building, all the footings and stuff are coming out of that. But there's a couple of items that I have concerns on. One is the fire sprinkler. Uh, I think uh, 
Councilman uh, Nitrick had uh, mentioned that there is a sprinkler in this building. Typically, a, uh, an open parking garage does not have sprinklers. I mean, we're talking maybe three to five hundred thousand dollars that we are now incurring that we wouldn't have to do if it was an open parking ramp that we would have have. Uh, you know, but then there's also the argument that. Uh, we put a building underneath their building, which made them a high-rise building, which made them get a fire pump uh, exhaust. So, I mean, there's some trade-offs there, and I don't think that's something, um, you know, some of those things you just live with. But the fire sprinkler one, I think, is something that would not have been involved, and it's a pretty big ticket item. Uh, I was also surprised, I think my understanding is, is that the architect, I know... It said that they were hired by both the city and the developer. My understanding is that he is strictly hired by the developer and that the, the, our design is from the developer, if you understand what I'm saying. Don, thank you very much, sir. All right. Welcome to our town. Good to have you here. Uh, Welcome, sir. I've been here 25 years. Good evening. My name is Thor Barton and uh, lived here in Sioux Falls for a little while now. Uh, first of all, just want to say, wow, what a thought. A parking ramp with a private complex on top of it, hotels, shopping centers. You know, it sounds like quite the project. Um, I, I don't necessarily know that I would be against the thought of having such a structure, a parking ramp with a hotel and shopping centers that we can make money from and, you know, park and not have to go, you know, brave the elements as I go upstairs to do a little bit of shopping. You know, that, that sounds pretty exciting. I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting prospect. I, I don't know that I'm necessarily 100% like sold as somebody who, of the public on this particular presentation of this project. I think it's an interesting idea, but the, it comes with a few concerns, um, at least for me. You know, one of those is that uh, this private institution is already uh, you know, stated that they're going to limit the specific type of businesses that go in there. You know, one of those comes to mind is a tattoo shop. Well, we actually have a uh, very reputable tattoo shop, not even a block away from here, that has, you know, wonderful clientele, wonderful business. They're out there in the public. They're doing community things. And I can't, I can't think of a reason why we would want to exclude certain businesses that are honestly just wanting to make money just like any other business. Um, it it's, it kind of doesn't really sit well. So... I would hope that maybe we would, you know, look at asking them if they're willing to pull that out of their, you know, deal and excluding businesses and just simply say, hey, we have open spaces for lease. And if you're an eligible business, please come, you know, and apply for these spaces and then have an application process from there. Uh, the other thing is, is that one of the key investors on this project, um, you know, it, without naming any names, they were recently involved in a project. Uh, very, very close to where this one's being proposed that is still in the public eye. And the, the, the confidence in that individual um, might not be there, you know, and might make the public kind of feel not at ease in working with them. Um, with that, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I'm glad that I'm not sitting in your seats tonight. This is a very difficult decision. Um, I appreciate all the work that I've seen uh, being put into this. And, uh, you know, thank you very much for, uh, for taking us into consideration. Thor, good job. Folks, so just because they're going to let you know, it's all been unique and, um, and in informative, so good job. Uh, welcome. Scott Erisman, always unique and informative. Um, I'm not going to talk about all the money and the different things that what we're spending here and the lease and everything else. I've looked at that stuff a million times. Somebody asked me about it today and I said, I've followed city government for 12 years and I've never seen such a hose job like this before. This, uh, we are not getting a good deal. But I'm not gonna talk about that. There's a lot of other people who've been talking about that already and I don't wanna repeat their comments. I find it ironic, the very person Last year, I attended a, a um, design standards meeting for downtown. One of the people that were at the meeting, this was at the design center, was Mr. Norm Drake, who is one of the guarantors on the contract with Legacy Development. During the meeting, he got into it with a couple of the other developers and an architect about how a private developer 
should be able to do what they want to with their property. And I thought, you know, free enterprise. I find it a little ironic that this same person is coming to the city and asking money from us to support his project as one of the guarantors. On top of that, only a few weeks after Mr. Drake made these comments about how a private developer should be able to do what they want to with their private property, his construction company and partner in legacy development, Holgrick Construction, was working on Copper Lounge property. It collapsed. I guess this is what you mean by being able to do what you want to. The one thing that I'm baffled the most by this entire thing, besides us spending too much money on the project and not getting parking, which was the original conversation about this three years ago, is that we are signing a contract with one person who thinks they should be able to do what they want, can do what they want to, and another person who's been fined over $200,000 by OSHA, they levied the fines, they're being contested, and once that process is done, they could be sued. Why on earth would anyone with the city, the finance department, the legal team, the private legal team, why would anyone throw a red flag in the air and say this is probably not a good idea? I told people I would support this project if they shared the costs of the foundation and other soft costs and Mr. Holgren's name was taken off the contract. Nobody wants to budge on those things. It's unfortunate. And if this passes tonight and these people sign this contract, there could be repercussions. And guess who's going to be holding the bag? It's not going to be legacy development. It's going to be us. Because even if we can say no one, no, we can say the contract's no good anymore, what if we're in the middle of building this parking ramp? We just stop construction, send them a bill. That's not going to happen. I'm very disappointed that there's this much support for this without some changes or some amendments to this. Uh, we're not solving a parking problem. We're paying too much. We're getting involved with people that we shouldn't be getting involved with. And as uh, the lady mentioned earlier, free enterprise and development has done very well in this town on its own. They've provided jobs, they've made a lot of money, and a lot of them have done it without the help of the taxpayer. Consider that. Thank you, Scott. Folks, anybody else? Well I'm Kathy Brachtels Bauer here in Sioux Falls. And I came a couple weeks ago and talked about the issue I have with having this building right across the street from the parking, uh, the bus stop, putting parking right there, when we could be beefing up our bus system and needing less parking downtown. And now I've been reading the essays from these children that are going to be reading them on Sunday at the Human Rights Award Ceremony, and I'm seeing how concerned they are about the environment, and it's just really touching me. That I felt I needed to bring that up again because the city once had uh, a few years back uh, a concern about the environment and set a goal for reducing cars on the streets by 10% by the year 2015. Now obviously we didn't follow up and put enough effort into that and we didn't reach that goal but I think we really need to think about uh, how cities are Looking now, around the world, there's movements to have less parking and have more people coming downtown, having vibrant cities, but with less parking, by using, having more public transportation. And we've done a good job in Sioux Falls working on bicycling, but I think we need to put more into the bus. And so, now I'm discovering, like last time I was here, I thought our net parking increase was good for public parking was going to be 390 spaces. Tonight it sounds like it's 240. And so I'm thinking, I don't know how many times each one gets used every day. Let's say, say it's 10 times. And so if there are 10 uses, that's, uh, and if we divide that by the number of bus routes, we just need to get 125 more uh, on average per bus route, route use every day. And we, would, and we would equal that amount of parking, parking need. So I'm saying, um, what, 
what I think the city needs to do is, whether you adopt this building or not, the next effort needs to be a concerted effort to beef up our, our bus system, to get more people here. There are people waiting to use it. There are so many people with disabilities in this town. If you came to that uh, Lifescape pancake feed, you, it's just amazing all the people that are involved with families with disabilities, both mental, physical, who really need, need more access to get around town. And that would make a big difference for them as well as seniors and other people. So that's my plea to go, um, to make that effort and to consider what we're doing and what way we need to become, what kind of city we need to become for the sake of our future. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, Tim Kant, a uh, longtime resident of Sioux Falls, had 15 years worth of businesses downtown. I'm probably as close to this as anybody. I own the Copper Lounge building for 10 years. I was involved in the first management group that was going to build a hotel and a parking ramp down there back in February of 2016. That group backed out in July. That was when the legacy development people came forward and wanted to be able to buy the building that I was in. And we agreed to uh, the purchase of the building. And then I stayed in that building until October of 2016. I left on the 1st of October, and as of a couple days ago, it would be one year since that building collapsed. The funny thing that I, happened that morning is that I was down at City Hall, and I had told the building services people, I said, I'm confused why you guys are letting these people take down a wall inside this building, and we have made several complaints to the construction company that there's cracks developing in the upstairs loft. The response from the building services was, wow, it sounds like a structural problem to me. I went straight back to my office, which was downtown, and 20 minutes later I got a call that said the building collapsed. So I went down there and then the whole process of, you know, the gentleman that passed away, and the Fodness gal that was buried for four hours, I also owned the Eastwood Smoke Shop was, that was there. And the thing that happens, I guess, now that is, is bothering me, and I had a real good relationship with Legacy. Uh, it has soured considerably in the last year because they seem to not have to uh, answer any of your letters that you send to them, uh, questions that you have from them. Because the way that that building was built, the front half that collapsed was built at a different time than the back half. The East World Smoke Shop building, I had, on October 1st, had signed a 10-year lease. So I had a 10-year lease on the East World Smoke Shop building. The East World built show, Smoke Shop building was deemed safe. It was deemed safe by your risk management person, Regan Smith. It was deemed safe by uh, uh, the construction people, uh, or Gil Hogan Construction, it was deemed safe by the then fire chief. They were letting us go in, in and out of that building. We were upstairs, they let us go up a staircase that was right next to a 30 foot fall because the building was safe. I had a clause in my lease with Legacy Development that said if that building was 75% inhabitable, they couldn't tear the building down. And if they were to tear the building down, they had to give me 15 days written notice. And neither one of those clauses were followed. We have asked for the last year, who gave the okay to tear that part of that building down? Was it the city? Was it legacy development? Was it an insurance company? They come back to me with the answers and to my attorney of, well, how do you know it was deemed safe? And my response is, it was your building. Tell me that it wasn't safe, because I have three people that said it was safe. So they won't answer any questions to us. So we're in the process right now, and you better be real careful what you do, we're in the process right now of filing a suit, a cease and desist on building where they're building right now with Lewis Drugs, because if I don't get some answers on who told them to tear down that Eastwold smoke shop, when I at least had said they couldn't, 
We're going to demand that they build the East Old Smoke Shop back up in that spot. So this could be a long, drawn-out process because I have legal standing. I have a lease that says I do. Legacy development will not answer any questions. And once again, it's been a year, and we have no answers. Secondly, I have moved a block away, one block away, and my business is down $100,000 in 10 months. I had the smoke shop at that location, the old location, for 10 years. My business did not fluctuate $20,000 a year in 10 years. I moved a block away, and we're down $100,000. We can't answer the question. We don't know what the question is. I guess it had been there for like 60 years is all that we can say, you know, and that's what happened. But there's, there's some things that people need to know of what's really going on with legacy and, and, and how they respond yeah. to people that, Thank that you, have Tim. questions. Appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome. Tim Stanga. I guess the main question is, is can we have something signed that says that the citizens of Sioux Falls are not going to, is not going to get stuck with paying any money on this facility? You ask people around town and you sit down with people and they ask, why is it that we spend all the money downtown? We invest so much money downtown. Well, it's nice that we're making people money that have shops downtown. It's great that I have to invest my money, my tax paying dollars and everything to uh, make people money. But I guess the main question is, is people ask, what, does the, what is the city gonna do for my neighborhood? Well, we get our potholes taken care of. We had the city come by and I always explain it to them. Like we get the potholes taken care of. We had the city come by and make sure your sidewalk, you don't trip and fall. And then they come by the next year and they tell you, well, you got to make sure you got the trees trimmed. And then they come by in the summer and they make sure you got your yard mowed. I said, isn't that enough? You know, if we invested a million dollars in each neighborhood, the older neighborhoods, just think of what these neighborhoods would really look like. But the problem is downtown, we've invested hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And really and truthfully, who have we made the money for? We've heard them already. All these people that have shops and all that stuff, they're making all kinds of money. But the citizens are sort of sitting there like this, wait a minute, we're sort of sitting on the wrong side of the fence. We asked for the city to trim trees. Oh gosh, that's terrible. We can't do that because it costs us money. What is this costing us? River Greenway, what does that cost us? But yet we can't spend one dime on trimming trees, but yet people are trimming their trees and they fall out of the tree and they're out of work for how long? It just bothers me. This kind of investment, that's fine. It looks pretty. I'm sure it'll bring people in. I guess the thing is, I, I live in Sioux Falls. I don't go downtown. I'll never pay, a, I'll never pay for it to begin with, so I guess that's where I'm sitting at on that. Well, we've had homeless people that have come in the last few weeks asking for help. And the city won't even reach out and give them help. I can remember we we're going to take some money from the Bishop Dudley House, if I'm correct. But I think Pat got some money back on it because we're going to invest in the baseball field. What's more important, taking care of the citizens of Sioux Falls or our pet projects? I just, uh, I always tell people that, you know, until the government comes up with some kind of funding for homeless people, you guys will still be homeless because the city of Sioux Falls will not do nothing for you. And all this talking out here and everybody showing up today, sad part about it is we could have voted on this three weeks ago and it wouldn't change anybody's mind at all because it's already voted on. You can give some people a blank piece of paper and they'd vote yes, just because it's a blank piece of paper. Tim, thank you very much. Folks, uh, we've been talking about this for about an hour now. Uh, I'm just gonna go through uh, the topics that have been covered. 
Uh, again, I think they've been they've been good, uh, different, unique, uh, interesting, informative. I just kind of go through them here a little bit. Uh, first of all, those that are against uh, this particular uh, ordinance, uh, skeptical of government. Um, if you expand the, uh, uh, we could expand the existing lots that we have. Uh, some of the new spaces are already leased. Uh, the cost per space is too high. Uh, there's still lingering questions. It seems too secret. Um, what do we do? Uh, after all this, you know, after the 80 years of its use, you know, then who's going to be held accountable or responsible? Uh, in Sioux Falls, development happens naturally. Uh, you know, we don't need to help uh, private business. Free enterprise works uh, well in Sioux Falls on its own. The amount of city funding is too high. Uh, the location is a premium, so, you know, the private developer seems to be getting too good a deal. Uh, we're trying to solve a problem that just doesn't exist. Um, people don't like uh, the firm legacy, uh, they don't like their business practices, uh, some folks don't like the construction manager risk uh, concept, uh, it seems like it's just not open enough to the, to the public. Uh, there are some concerns with certain investors uh, that are in the project, fire sprinkler concerns, uh, some businesses will be limited from being part of this development once it's, uh, once it's ultimately built. Uh, potentially some potential conflict of interests. Uh, Public-private partnerships are, are not a good thing. Uh, we're not getting a good deal. Uh, there's some that feel that there's uh, too many copper lounge uh, connections and the, the issues that happened with that. Uh, public transportation, if it was improved, would lessen the need for parking. Uh, we need to guarantee that citizens will be held liable for potential issues that may happen in the future. Uh, too much investment in our downtown already. Uh, we should be putting money in other neighborhoods. Uh, why don't we use dollars uh, instead of on a mixed-use parking ramp? Why don't we use them for citizen services instead, whether it be mowing trees, shoveling sidewalks, whatever it would be. Or not mowing trees, trimming trees, mowing lawns, shoveling sidewalks. Um, some of the uh, uh, items, uh, some of the um, information for this particular ordinance uh, this is just another example and pride in our downtown revitalization. Uh, we need downtown parking now. Uh, it will bring people, jobs, revenue, growth. Uh, this is really visionary. Uh, it's a long-term visionary thing and, and it's definitely a missing component to downtown Sioux Falls. Uh, the reward to risk ratio is great. Um, the speaker felt that there was limited risk here. Uh, we want to do, do what we can to keep businesses downtown and our adequate parking is critical. Uh, we'll add revenues across a variety of different uh, revenue streams. Uh, and there's going to be at least 120 hotel rooms, uh, estimated over 52,000 guests, uh, and, and estimated around $47 per visit. You do the math. Um, Public-private partnerships um, uh, have been dramatic over the last 10 years and uh, have shown uh, all kinds of, uh, of wins. And uh, one person felt that there were a variety of issues that they had in the beginning. However, now that uh, there's been debate and, and due diligence and discussion, uh, the issues have been addressed. Uh, again, folks, this is really good stuff. Uh, this is an item that's been discussed at least three years. Uh, the council is, uh, I know, ready to uh, to um, uh, at least discuss this item. Uh, Mr. Danielson, you will be the last speaker. Mr. Danielson, go. Mr. Danielson, you will be the last speaker. Mr. Danielson, go. Well, I guess I got uh, some things that I want to add to this that are, uh, by the way, I'm Bruce Danielson. First off, I want to ask, we have something about guarantors. We have no idea at this moment what guarantors are. What are they actually guaranteeing? The building gets built or the building gets paid for? We don't know. It doesn't really spell it out very well in anything. Another question I had was, what's the job of government? Capitalism or socialism? This is about as socialistic of process as there probably is in this town and in this state. South Dakota is a capitalist state and you guys want to run it right up there with socialism. 
You know, this is like the stories told of the indoor swimming pool, as I've been hearing it tonight. You know, we've been talking about it for decades, you know. We, we, the, sw the swimming pool was a 1953 or 51 or 1921 or something about an indoor pool. You know, so it was all of a sudden this decades-long process when actually it was just something that got pulled out of somebody's something. We have, uh, so what now tonight we've been hearing it being said that this is three weeks We've been looking at this for three weeks. And then we're being told, oh, this is a three-year process. If you go back three years to the Walker study, and you look at what the Walker study actually was, it was a $9 million ramp with 600 spaces sitting on fractured stone. There's nothing different in the foundation that we're talking about but because we're going to be putting on a private development on top of this building, we have to build a more solid foundation. So now we're getting half the spaces for $12 million more. So the Walker study gave this location a very low rating. So why are we putting it here? Now, this building is going to have 35,000 square feet of retail space with employees. The hotel motel is going to have employees, plus the people that are going to be staying there. Where are these employees going to park? If you have any other kind of commercial work here, where are those employees going to park? So we get down to it, and you go, oh yeah, they're going to have to park in the ramp. How are they going to afford to park in that ramp? What's going to happen to the uh, to the money that's been sitting in a reserve fund. We won't have any money left over in the reserve fund to cover any kind of emergencies that are gonna come up. Nobody's been talking about it. So if we have an emergency at one of the other ramps or we have to buy a bunch of parking meters, we're gonna to have to go out and borrow money again or take it out of the second penny. So how are we ahead in the parking when we could use up all the 390 spots in this building just for the activity that's going on in this building? Why not tell us a straight up story in this whole process? And thank you for letting me be last. Sir, sir, come forward. Hi, I'm a member of the Parking Advisory Committee. I was just going to give you a report. Ahead, just a quick of what um, Todd Meyer Henry, I've been on the Parking Advisory Board for since 2010, um, most half of our members have been on since 2010. We've studied parking diligently and have gone through all of the facts and issues that have been addressed. Um, the key issues that we came to a conclusion and recommended uh, that the we are in support of this project is one, that borrowing costs are gonna go up probably in the near future, so any delay would not only cost additional interest uh, for this project or a project similar to this, but in addition, any delay, 4% construction cost would cause any parking facilities to go up. Walker study indicates that we need, I can't remember, 500 and, we need, we need a lot more spaces than we have right now. Half of them should already be in place. This project started in 2016. We were hoping it'd be under construction. It isn't. Uh, I think we're be, the parking board believes that we're behind on this structure. We've discussed the, the uh, the construction manager at risk, and all of the parties that are involved, uh, the bond attorney, uh, BJ with Kirk Pagri, your financial advisor, we believe you have the best advice. Uh, they owe you fiduciary duties and are giving you the best advice. And uh, uh, our conclusion is, uh, even though uh, the investor or the, the, the company legacy who's going to raise the money and be the developer uh, had an unfortunate event, that that should not affect the ability to build this uh, for the city and for the parking utility. Plus, the parking utility is in great shape. The, all of our parking facilities are in good shape. Uh, we're maintaining them well, plus we're very profitable. And we actually are overbooked. We've had a number of parking uh, reports that were 100% full. And Walker says we should be 95% full, so when you pull into a parking lot anytime, during the day should have a space and that's why the parking board uh, would request that the city uh, consider this and approve it. Thank you very much. Council? Council?
Mr. Mayor, Councilor Sean. Um, this is the only t opportunity the public's going to have to address us. It's the only time they have the option to be here. There's a lot of people that are interested. I think if there's anyone else that wants to speak, they should at least have a chance to be heard by us. I think that's our responsibility to hear from them. And I know we've heard a lot and we've spent, but an hour is is a small price to pay to have citizens have a chance to address us. So Council if, if you don't mind, if we could uh, see if anyone else does Council want to. thanks for your input. Uh, I talked with uh, Council Chair Kiley, and he recommends that we move on to the Council. I, I think that's disappointing Councilors. to our citizens. Councilors, any, uh, anybody want to engage us on this topic? Would anybody want to make a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Then a motion to approve this item. Second, Erickson. Has been seconded. Any discussion? Councilor, uh, 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 Staley. Staley. Councilor uh, 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 Staley. Staley is the name. Thank you. Um, well, th there has been um, much public discussion since the November 21st meeting that we had a few weeks ago. And since that time, the council, I know all of us have received many emails and phone calls. Councilor Pat Starr, Christine Erickson, Councillor Greg Nicert and myself have also spoken freely with the media. I wrote a letter to the editor with my concerns. I visited with a group of Republican women and I also spoke at the Democratic Forum. I sent out a postcard with my concerns on it that I paid for. I've encouraged citizens to reach out and give us input. And throughout my whole year and a half, well, it's been more than that, my time on the council, I'm constantly giving up our contact information because we are here to hear from the public. And more and more, I believe we need to be connecting with our 180,000 residents because many people don't know what's going on in our community. I am very grateful since this emerged for all the respectful discussion that has happened pro and con. I've gotten emails, especially from businessmen, some of them telling me I need to change my position. We've had respectful discussions. I appreciate that. I'm always willing to visit with somebody. And if you want to, you know, send any insults my way, I say, God bless you. I can take it. Uh, since this emerged last April, I have been consistent in my opposition to this proposal. And there were, there's been seven points that have stood out to me. And last uh, meeting, November 21st, Director Ketchum and I had a discussion about my concerns. And I wanted to give, I've got a short um, recap of what was said. If, uh, David, Jim, David, if you play that, please. And just, you can va validate whether I, these are accurate. Parking ramp fact. Total, the total cost for this proposal is estimated at more than 20 million. This is expected to be completely supported by user fees, which are those people who are using the downtown parking facilities and parking meters. Rates for these facilities and parking meters may increase to pay for this project. Would you agree with that? Councilor, I would say rates are uh, subject to increase to maintain all of the parking system, not just this project. Mm -hmm. Certainly a part of that revenue will go to pay for this, but right. it'll also go to pay for approximately $8 million in maintenance over the same... Of the other, months. right, but, yes. but rates may increase. Yeah, but I, I would look at it more globally as the entire system getting funded, not just one asset. Okay, parking ramp fact number two. This project will be backed by the second penny. We'll, let, we'll get that up there so people, okay. This project will be backed by the second penny. It will be the collateral for the project in the event that the downtown parking facilities don't generate enough income to make the bond payment. I would probably say secured instead of collateral. There's probably some technical meaning that Tracy could better explain, but yes, ultimately the second penny is gonna be used to secure this debt. Uh, but the enterprise fund would be used to repay the debt. But is it like a second signer? Uh, it's securing the debt. Okay. So ultimately, if we can't pay for it, yes, the, we'd come okay. to the city council and ask for them to approve uh, any assistance. Okay, systems. thank you. Parking ramp, ramp fact number three. 
the estimated cost is 20 million and you said tonight 20.6 million uh, 525 proposed parking spaces and would we say that that's nailed down that do I could I re remove the word proposed no, I think as we're in the middle of the design process, we're in schematic design, we still have to go through design development and construction documents, okay. and okay. certainly there will be fluctuations as we refine the design to a more... Okay, uh, more and then 135 lost parking spaces, that, that would be what we're going to be losing on that flat parking space right now. Okay. And so really the total new, if we're talking about new parking spaces, is 390. Okay. Would you agree with that? I, I wouldn't call it lost. I would say that we're rebuilding a hundred. Right, but we're rebuilding we're, five. But we're not. We're not. Main, it's not like we're building in another another area, and we and still have those. Yeah, the net impact to the system after this will be approximately four hundred spaces. So we'll gain four hundred spaces approximately. So three ninety is close enough to. Okay, thank you. And then parking ramp fact number four. The city states that the individual legacy development investors that we are partnering up with will remain confidential. Well, I would tell you uh, the development agreement and the uh, guarantee that's listed in that names four members of the corporation, Norm Drake, Larry Canfield, Paul Sink, and Aaron Holtgren, then those are the those are the four members of the corporation. There they will may, be, but I'm talking about other I people who will have a financial interest in the project. So those names could, will not be revealed to the public. It, it's my understanding that uh, limited partners aren't disclosed uh, publicly. Okay. And I don't, the city attorney may be able to weigh in on some of the naming of uh, investors. But I think we've, the city's went through this process in prior um, projects and a legal opinion exists that says it would not be appropriate to name all of those limited investors. Thank you, Darren. Say, okay, so that's uh, what the conversation we had and that, those are the the, uh, the items I've been talking about for the last two weeks. So tonight in, in the spirit of compromise, I'm going to be offering two amendments to this whole process. And uh, the first amendment, tonight, in, in the spirit of compromise, I'm going to be offering two amendments to this whole process. And uh, the first amendment that I'm going to offer to our item 44 is I'm going to offer a motion, motion to amend item 44 by removing any reference to the second penny. The motion is tonight for lack of a second. second. I'll get the second in for discussion. Thank you, Councillor Starr. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I have a question for the author of the sponsor, <laughs> or the sponsor of that. My, my question is, is we voted just a couple weeks ago on the Lewis and Clark bonds, which were secured by Second Penny. I heard zero concern from anyone on this council. It, it doesn't about matter. That. What we're not talking. We don't go I'm, back I'm, to where we were. Councillor Erickson, just one second. But I'm curious your, about could that. Could you explain your, your motion? Uh, my, my mo I'd like uh, Matt Nelson to come up, please. <laughs> I've heard um, Mr. Meyer Henry just stated from the parking department that we're, these our facilities, the parking facilities are very str strong. They have a strong financial backing. Today I got an email from a constituent who had gotten an, an email back from Matt. And Matt, you said to her, the public parking system is in a strong financial position and extensive financial projections indication, I think you meant indicate the system, will maintain its strength throughout the bond repayment period. It sounds very, very optimistic about what's happening right now with all of our parking facilities. Then you said the use of sales tax bonds will benefit the public because sales tax bonds will have a much lower interest rate than parking revenue bonds alone. This significantly minimizes interest costs. Only parking system revenues are projected, projected the keyword, to pay off the sales tax <laughs> bonds. And then you said no sales or property taxes are expected to be used to, for the parking proj project. Expected. I didn't know sales tax was even, or property tax was even on the table. That you're expected that Council that would City, be. Do you have a question for Matt? So the, the question. Well, what I wanted to say is that I had talked with Matt months ago 
about ha using our pro the existing parking facilities as their own collateral. I have a great concern about tying the second penny to this, and I have I've said this publicly. I've said it over and over again. The public that I talk with also has concerns. And if this, if our system is so strong, I think it should be able to support itself without taking that second penny that we've already pledged to debt for the administration building, $10 million a year used to pay back our event center obligation. We use it for our streets and all sorts of other capital projects. So I'm, as a compromise, I'm saying, let's take the second penny out of this and just have it be uh, supported by the revenue from the rent, from the parking facility. Councilor Scar, you were the gentleman who seconded this. Uh, did you have any comments? Councilor Erickson, did you have any follow-up comments? I just would be curious the position of how it changed so quickly in a couple of weeks. Sure. Why we had zero conversation over the bonding we just did a few short weeks ago from the Lewis and Clark bonds. It was pledged with second penny. And there was no conversation, no dialogue about it at all. And if I may respond, then that means that from going too. forward, I can, I'm never going to be allowed Council, to... Councilor Staley, I didn't give you the floor. Anything else, uh, Councilor Erickson? I would be curious about that as well as, I do have one question for Matt as far as the sales tax Matt. bonds. By securing this, or by pledging the second penny, are we able to secure a lower interest rate for that? Uh, are we able to have more flexibility? What's the benefit of that? Uh, Matt Nelson, public parking manager for the city of Sioux Falls. And just, there's a lot of people in here that probably don't know me. Uh, the message that went out, uh, I try to answer everyone that emails. If I get an email, I email them. If I get a phone number, I call them. So that email that you see, it's so we can respond and interact with our citizens. Uh, the reason that we would recommend backing with the second penny is to get a lower rate. Our goal is absolutely to get the lowest rate for our citizens in Sioux Falls. We do not want to charge them extra money because that money gets passed on to people uh, that are using our system and they're citizens of Sioux Falls. Um, we don't want to send that money to California and New York. We want to keep it in our town. Thank you for your answer and your brevity. Appreciate it. I'd encourage a no vote on this as we certainly see the benefit of why we're doing that and we've never used it. Uh, it was communicated to us as a council that that money hasn't ever had to be used. I understand. I don't like the fact that it would ever have to be used, but we have a track record of not using it. We see what our um, parking system is financially stable and strong. Um, and so I'm confident in that and able save, to save the money with a lower interest rate with that. This council is also, like I said, just voted just a few short weeks ago on the Lewis and Clark bonds with zero dialogue about it. And uh, we did a great service for our citizens, saving our citizens millions of dollars in that. So I'd uh, ask that we move the vote along. Thank you. Councilor Neiser. I brought a resolution forward recently that said that added the parking division to the list of enterprises and it is so that specifically means if there ever was a default, which there has never been a default in the enterprise funds, it would have to pay every penny back. You have to look at the risk and reward. Are you going to cause the ratepayers in the system to pay a lot more money over the years, millions of dollars conceivably on a massive project? for something that is a very, very, very low probability. It's a risk and reward thing. And there's, there's just no consistency here. We voted this through a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's a stunt. Vote no. Councilor Staley. Well, just in response to Councilor Erickson's uh, question, just because we vote to approve something over here doesn't mean that we have to approve that same thing moving forward. Each project needs to be considered individually. And so again, I've had. I'm just. I'm just trying to find a solution to some uh, concern I have been raising for the last eight months. That the second penny, we say, well, it's never been used. It won't be used. It might be used. I'm saying, take it off the table, and let's not even worry about that possibility. Hey, roll call vote, please. This is a vote. This on the amendment. Okay. Councilmember Staley. Yes. Erickson. No. Erpenbach. No. Kylie? No. Neitzert? No. Rolfing? No. Selberg? No. Starr? Yes. Uh, that has failed two to six. Uh, we're back on the uh, we're back on the main motion. Yes, Councilor Rolfing. I, I just have one request. I, I think uh, I know what, where I'm going with this, but uh, uh, this has happened 
a number of times now, and I would uh, respectfully ask my colleague at the end of the diocese to not use my name or email address on anything that she sends out to the general public because it infers that I support what she has put on that card or newspaper or whatever, uh, which many times I do not. So I would just respectfully ask that she not include my name. Everybody knows how to get a hold of me anyway. So uh, please get a hold of me. And Council, I'm going to respectfully ask that all of you stay focused on the second reading. And it involves this ordinance in using uh, sales tax revenue bonds to construct a mixed-use parking lot. Uh, don't wave from that. Let's stay focused on this. Okay, folks? Does anybody else want to engage the public on the motion? Does anybody else want to engage the public on the motion? A Roco vote. Really? Just want to. A Roco vote, please. Councilmember Staley. No. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach. Yes. Kylie. Yes. Neitzert. Yes. Rolfing. Yes. Selberg. Yes. Starr. Present. That is past six. To one and one abstain. Uh, pass six to one and one abstain. It's, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. In my ears, I've never had that happen before, but um, welcome. Uh, item 45. Item 45. Point of order, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I, I, I don't even know if you can do that. I don't have the option for abstention. Hang on, let me just, I, I would just ask for clarification yeah. again. My memory's not awesome. Councilor Starr, I think that. Uh, I think that if you don't, if you do that, I think it's a no. That's my gut. But let's hang on, Karen. Bring my cup here, Robert. Excuse me. Karen, uh, this, uh, Karen, would you mind? Karen, if, uh, if you're going to discuss 30.017. You can go ahead and read. Go ahead, Tom. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Ordinance Second, Tom Greco, City Clerk, 30.017 uh, voting procedure. City Council members may not abstain from voting, but may absent themselves from the, from the meeting by physically leaving the meeting at the time an item is called by the clerk. Members with a financial interest in a matter shall disclose the interest and shall absent themselves from the meeting by physically leaving the meeting while the matter is considered. And that's consistent with Robert's rules, Mr. Mayor. Um, to abstain means to refrain, to refrain from voting, and as a consequence, there can be no such thing as an abstention vote. Very good. So, uh, Councilor, I would recommend that as a... Uh, it's too late. He's yeah. Vote. Councilor Starr. Yes, uh, it's improper procedure. It's, it's improper. What, uh, Council Chair? Would you mind going to get your colleague and ask him to come to the, uh, to the, to this chair? Star refuses to return to the dais for the rest of the meeting. For the rest of me, he stayed. I asked that question, and he stayed until the end of the item. Very good, uh, City of Sioux Falls. Uh, we've got an elected official who has um, not been willing to actually perform his role. Um, uh, with.
with that in mind, uh, I, that has uh, passed six to one, um, and uh, I guess we'll follow up with uh, the procedures after that. And then uh, as for the folks that um, had just had the uh, unprofessional uh, outburst, I would just in ask you to remain productive, remain professional, uh, be cognizant of the other folks that are in the room that have remained that way, and um, uh, if you can't do that, I would just respectfully ask that you, you leave the room. Item 45. Item item 45 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls. Very good. Uh, City of Sioux Falls, uh, we've got an elected official who has um, not been willing to actually perform his role. Um, uh, with that in mind, uh, I, that has uh, passed six to one um, and uh, I guess we'll follow up with uh, the procedures after that and then uh, as for the folks that um, had just had the uh, unprofessional uh, outburst I would just in ask you to remain productive remain professional uh, be cognizant of the other folks that are in the room that have remained that way and um, uh, if you can't do that I would just respectfully ask that you you leave the room Item 45. And then uh, as for the folks that um, had just had the uh, unprofessional uh, outburst, I would just in ask you to remain productive, remain professional, uh, be cognizant of the other folks that are in the room that have remained that way. And um, uh, if you can't do that, I would just respectfully ask that you, you leave the room. Item 45. Uh, if you can't do that, I would just respectfully ask that you, you leave the room. Item 45. If you can't do that, I would just respectfully ask that you, you leave the room. Item 45. Item. Uh, if you can't do that, I would just respectfully ask that you, you leave the room. Item 45. Item, item 45 is a second reading. If you can't do that, I would just respectfully ask that you, you leave the room. Exactly. Item 45. Item, item 45 is a second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, authorizing the mayor to enter into a development agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and Legacy Development and Consulting Company, LLC, along with other documents, amendments, or other instruments as may be deemed necessary and appropriate consistent with the development agreement. Item, item 45 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, authorizing the mayor to enter into a development agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and Legacy Development and Consulting Company, LLC, along with other documents, amendments, or other instruments as may be deemed necessary and appropriate consistent with the development agreement. Darren, any uh, comments? Tracy? Uh, Mayor, City Council, we have no further comments. We covered everything in our presentation. Would uh, ask for your support on this item. Thank you. Folks, uh, this is again a second reading. Uh, it, it's similar in nature to the item 44. Uh, I can't tell you not to come forward. Uh, but if you have some comments that you believe would uh, be interesting and, and informative as well as unique to the conversation, welcome. Uh, if not, I am going to turn it over to the City Council and let them do their work. Welcome. Excuse me, Leona Wheeland. Welcome. I wasn't expecting to do this, but I haven't been here for quite a few years. So my question just is to you. Are you not going to consider what that gentleman said about legacy? It seems to me the new points that were expressed this evening regarding South Dakota law and his experience with legacy, I sure wouldn't go with them. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else, folks? Welcome.
Dan Fritz. Uh, I feel obligated to stand up and speak on behalf of, uh, I'm a lawyer here in town, my client, uh, the Thotness family. Um, I believe in private, public partnerships. I think what you're doing here is a good thing. I think you have to be careful about who you're partnering with. Um, you'll have to forgive my client for not having the same trust that you have in your development partner. Um, you want to make sure if you're going to do this that corners aren't cut, that rules aren't bent, that things aren't overlooked in the construction of this project. I am happy to see the journey group is, we've, we've selected a slightly, and I say that facetiously, a slightly better contractor this time. I have uh, the utmost respect for journey group. Um, and it's quite an improvement over the last contractor that was selected, to my knowledge, by this development group. Um, if corners are cut, if rules are bent, we were all warned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fritz. Folks, anybody else? Folks, would anybody want to make a motion to approve item 45? Oh. Yeah, second. The second as well, Councillor Staley. Uh, so, what are we on? Forty-five. No. Yes, we are. Okay. Well, um, let me let me also say one of the concerns I have had. Excuse me. I've been uh, talking about it. The Argus Leader also supported me in the Sunday paper. If you happen to read it, talking about transparency, and I'm talking about who we're doing business with. I've been asking to see the list of all the investors moving forward. They, get, they gave us the guarantors, the, the, the front men of the money, but I want to know who, who, everybody who's going to be involved with this moving forward. Why would you be embarrassed to tell us who you are? And I was on the radio, and I'm going to say, I, I was on the radio on Greg Belfridge's show saying, is it Christian Erickson's brother? Is it my sister? Is it Mayor Huther's mother-in-law? Those things matter to our community because we're partnering with these people. We have a right to know this is different than any other policy or uh, proposal we've done in the past. My colleague Greg Neitzert has said to me, well, Teresa, we have a, a building, a mo hotels on, on city land. This is different. We didn't build a parking ramp in conjunction with these people. This is unique. My personal belief is that we need to know. I, I think the citizens of our community, for the most part, want to know. I, have I heard from some businessmen who said we don't need to know? Of course I have. And I, I want to say to them, are you going to be investing in this project? Tell us who you are. Now more than ever in our growing community, we need to have openness and transparency. And we can't be defensive about it. The people can handle the truth. So I have a amendment to this, just to say compromise, and my amendment to the contract. And by the way, we're always giving these contracts, and we're asked to sign off on them, Council and we Sealy. don't get to we don't get to have any input into them. Councilor Sealy, would you please read your amendment? I will. I will. Motion to amend the agreement by inserting a new sentence J under Article 16. Sentence J shall read, quote, developer shall identify any investor in this project and make this available to public inspection. The developer, the developer shall comply with this provision for the duration of the agreement. It's been a motion to amend this item. It is still for lack of a second. Back to uh, item 45. Uh, yes, Councilor Erickson. Mr. Mayor, in the name of lack of a second. Back to uh, item 45. Uh, yes, Councilor Erickson. Mr. Mayor, in the name of transparency, I just want to make it very clear that my brother is not an investor. I am not an investor. My husband's not an investor. We have no cousins, um, siblings, um, in-laws, aunts, uncles. Um, 
at all investing. So since the accusation was made, I just want to make it very clear today that I am in no way, shape, or form involved in this project at all. Thank you. Councilor Mock. I just wanted to ask one simple question about all that's I mean it was one of those things that really crossed my mind as we were talking about it the 21st of November and then of course as you know it's been in the paper and, and we've all I'm sure received calls about it you know one of the the largest producers of precast concrete in the country is located here in Sioux Falls and so um, that was why I wanted to bring it up in that number one we're not saying that it's not a good product. We right. use it in a lot, a lot, a lot of buildings. But we and will have it on this project. Right, and it will be on this project. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. And then I would also like to say that I also am not investing in this project, nor is anyone that I know. And so uh, thanks for bringing it up. Appreciate the slam on, on our credibility up here. That's always, always helpful. And counselors, uh, just to ask, I think we've made it very clear. Darren's made it on at least probably 10, 20 times that uh, that's actually not, not even allowed. So we don't have to do a complete uh, roll call of all of us and our family members not being. So I would just respectfully ask to just end it. Um, good job. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor. Would it be helpful to this group um, to ask uh, Danny Brown to come forward and uh, tell us about the state laws that uh, talk about uh, the uh, conflict of interest and specifically the safe harbor rules, so that uh, this can be cleared up once and for all. Uh, that state law prohibits the uh, use of uh, or the names being disclosed. Councilor Rolfing, I I would just uh, we we must have covered that thing probably twenty times, uh, but yet some you know, people don't. Okay. Yeah, I I don't think it's necessary. But I mean, you could certainly. Uh, I. Um, Councilor said, do you have something new to add? I, I, to yes, I do, because at our last meeting that was brought up, Councilor Rolfing wasn't here, and, and Danny Brown said it was a gray area. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is that a developer could release the names if they wanted to. It's up to, they, they, we, they're not mandated to do it, but if they wanted to, they could. Thank you, Councilor Stanley. A roll call vote, please. We're on item 45, by the way. Council Member Staley. No. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzer? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Star? That was passed six to one. Item 46. Item 46 is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a construction manager at risk agreement between the City of Sioux Falls and Journey Group Company for construction manager at risk services for the parking ramp at the corner of 10th Street and Mall Avenue, along with other documents, amendments, change orders, or other instruments as may be deemed necessary and appropriate, consistent with the terms of the agreement. Darren, any uh, further comment? Uh, opportunity to engage the council on this particular topic. Uh, this involves the construction manager at risk. Uh, welcome. Scott Harris from Sioux Falls. And it actually, what I'm going to address actually, it has to do with 46, 47, 48, 49. So I'm just going to get it all done at once. Um, <clears throat> before I say that, not to belabor it, the um, thing about the investing with these projects, it, all it is is we're taking your word. There's nothing in writing. So. I just wanted to mention that. Um, as for what I was going to say about this stuff, I don't even understand why these are on the agenda tonight. The ink hasn't even, well, you haven't even signed the contract yet for the new project. So, of course, the ink hasn't dried because you haven't even signed it yet. And you're already approving a construction company, a uh, <clears throat> capital program change, a, a, a vacation of a street, an easement, Utility relocation. I thought this project wasn't going to break town, break uh, ground until spring. What, why, why do we have to ramrod so fast? We say that we've been talking about this for three years, but we got to ramrod everything in this project through in one hour. That's ridiculous. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I. Uh, <laughs> Council? Or Mr. Danson, did you want to speak to the side? Well, I walked up here, so I think I do. So I'm Bruce Danielson. Uh, on each one of these projects, we've learned, we've tried as 
a public to learn lessons about this construction manager at risk setup. I like Journey Group, just like I like Henry Carlson. There's a lot of good companies around. I don't throw anything at them, but we've already learned a lesson, or we should have learned a lesson, in a siding settlement. We had so many things that were wrong about the construction manager at risk. Government should not be doing construction manager at risk. Never. We need to know on a constant basis what's being spent, how it's being spent, and the parties that are involved in it. We have a lot of secret handshake deals that went on with the event center and the buildings that were built around town using the CMAR. We still don't know really what all has gone on with them. Like I said, I've always liked Henry Carlson. I've always liked Journey Group in their, in their former name. There's a lot of good companies around, but I think the CMAR thing is absolutely wrong, and history's gonna prove it right in this one, again, as the secrecy continues. Folks, anybody else? Councilor Nicer. Thank you. I, I don't want to let all of these agenda items pass without at least just giving just my overarching viewpoint of why I'm supporting this. I'm not going to go into all the, all the details. I've done the press release and everything. I, I, whenever I look at these things, I, I try to come into them with an open mind. I told the administration, show me there's a need, show me we can afford it, show me it's the right location, and show me the costs are properly allocated. I've had countless meetings, uh, calls. Uh, emails, studied this for hours. They've answered every one of the questions that I've asked, and I've asked a lot of questions. So I've looked at this from a, a lot of angles. I, I, I looked at both sides, and they were able to answer all of the questions I had right up until right up until the end here. Um, one thing I think that's being lost is that we're going to have full use of this of this parcel. Whether this development went here or not, this is as big of a ramp as we would build. We're not losing use of, uh, of, of the parcel. We're not being injured. We're not getting only part of it. We're not leasing it and losing the entire use of it for the next 80 years. We're doing the ramp as we were going to do anyway. We're getting the spots that, that we were looking for. But in addition, we're going to have all of the extra property and sales tax and when you read the 100-page agreement, you do see that there's a lot of things that are factored in there, and they try to factor in a lot of the worst-case scenarios. That's what you do in, in deals like this. You've got to try to contemplate those and deal with that. One other thing that I do want to cover is there's been a lot of talk about this isn't going to solve the problem because it's only going to have 390 spaces and all these other things. We're getting 525 spaces, approximately. We will net out of it 390, approximately. In the 2014 Walker study, it was said that we needed 2,000 new spots over the next 20 years into 2034. The city provides about 40% of the parking spaces downtown. The rest are private. Private is actually more. So there's about 800 we would need to supply in the next 20 years. This adds 400 of those spots. That gets us halfway home, and we have until 2034 to take care of that. In addition, in the last few years, we've had the private addition of Washington Square at 200 spaces, Lloyd at 250 underground spaces, 22 surface spaces, 130 on-street public spaces that we're going to get out of the Cascade project. So that puts us at uh, 500 and some public spaces. So, and the county, by the way, is going to do 100 plus spaces now with their expansion across the street. So we're looking at, we've got, in recent years, we're going to be, if this is approved, you know, if we pass all this, we're going to have 1,100 spaces or so in the last several years. We're, we're halfway home, so um, it, it's not that, you know, we're, we're not building enough spaces. And the other thing about picking all of these numbers about who, you know, we're only going to net so many if the, if, the, if the hotel leases it or whatever. Um, I, I continue to state, if I'm renting a space out, I don't care whether the person renting it is on top of it, across the street from it, or across town. It's the same revenue. It is public spaces. Thank you. Council, would anybody want to make a motion to approve this resolution? Move to approve. Council, would anybody want to make a motion to approve this resolution? Move to approve, Erickson. Second. Councilor Vice Chair Erickson has made a motion to approve this resolution. Second by Councilor Chair Kylie. A roll call, please. Council Member Staley? No. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes.
Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Star? That is passed six to one. Item 47. Item 47 is a resolution. Uh, 49. Item 49 is deferred from the City Council meeting of Tuesday, September 19th and Tuesday, November 7th, 2017. A resolution vacating a portion of the Mall Avenue right-of-way as shown on Exhibit A. Darren? Um, Mayor Darren Ketchum, Community Development. Chad Hebe, the City Engineer, is also here if you have questions about this item. This is that 838 square feet we referenced in the Mall Avenue right-of-way. Thank you, Darren. Folks, anybody want to engage the council on this particular topic involving a small piece of right away? Very good. Uh, council? Move to approve Erickson. Second, Selberg. Councilor Erickson has been a motion to approve this item. Second by Councilor um, Selberg. Thank you. A roll call, please. Council Member Staley? No. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Star? No. Uh, that's Mr. Mayor, is it appropriate for Councillor Starr to be uh, back? Uh, uh, I had asked, uh, uh, Councillors, I, I did ask uh, I, I Karen and Danny both uh, whether well, they felt that that was appropriate and, and uh, they felt that uh, it, it was. Enough, that's fine. Very good, thank you. Council, uh, item 50. Item 50 is a resolution including certain contiguous territory within the corporate limits of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Annexation 7107-2017, Lou Bacher, 2nd Edition, East 69th Street and South Bonson Avenue. Uh, Jason Bieber represents... 56 reported the November 30th, 2017 notice of transfer of appropriations within major organizational units. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, city of Sioux Falls, it's been a very long day for these city councilors. Uh, also a very productive day. Thank them for, your, for their service next time you see them. Council, let's get out of here. So moved. Second. It's been a motion to get out of here. And it has been seconded. Uh, uh, all, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. This meeting is adjourned. Who falls? Make it a great night. Council, let's get out of here. So moved. Second. It's been a motion to get out of here. And it has been seconded. Uh, uh, all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. This meeting is adjourned. Who falls? Make it a great night. Also a very productive day. Thank them for your for their service next time you see them. Council, let's get out of here. So moved. Second. It's been a motion to get out of here. And it has been seconded. Uh, for, uh, uh, all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. This meeting is adjourned. Who falls? Make it a great night. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, city of Sioux Falls, it's been a very long day for these city councilors. Uh, also a very productive day. Thank them for, your, for their service next time you see them. Council, let's get out of here. So moved. Second. It's been a motion to get out of here. And it has been seconded. Uh, for, uh, uh, all, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. This meeting is adjourned. Sioux Falls, make it a great night. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, city of Sioux Falls, it's been a very long day for these city councilors. Uh, also a very productive day. Thank them for, your, for their service next time you see them. Council, let's get out of here. So moved. Second. It's been a motion to get out of here. And it has been seconded. Uh, uh, all, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. This meeting is adjourned. Sioux Falls, make it a great night. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, city of Sioux Falls, it's been a very long day for these city councilors. Uh, also a very productive day. Thank them for, your, for their service next time you see them. Council, let's get out of here. So moved. Second. It's been a motion to get out of here. And it has been seconded. Uh, for, uh, uh, all, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. This meeting is adjourned. Sioux Falls, make it a great night. Tensions rise in the city council chamber surrounding a major construction project in Sioux Falls. Plus, Democratic lawmakers call for...
from the KSF White. The clouds will break up, buddy. A lot of crying. A lot of emotional. This is Kate. Or not nearly as windy as today. We'll see partly to mostly cloudy skies. Highs in mid-20s. The east a little warmer. Forward on a $50 million parking ramp in downtown Sioux Falls last night. But before the 6 to 1 vote that was made, the meeting was a pretty lively one. The parking ramp project has been a contentious issue these last few weeks. Tensions rose so high at the meeting last night, a council member left his seat and walked out of the room in the middle of discussion. It's too late. He's yeah. Yeah. Councilor Starr. Yes, uh, it's improper procedure. Councilmember Pat Starr left the room following a roll call vote on the first agenda item pertaining to the parking ramp. In an interview after the meeting, Starr said he was upset that the mayor and council chair decided to short the public input period after about an hour in. People want to be heard. When citizens of Sioux Falls want to address their local government and have that opportunity, they're in the room to do it. It's the least we can do as a council is give them that opportunity to be heard. Starr says the decision to leave was symbolic to represent the citizen voices that were not being heard. His departure counted as abstaining from voting. The Sioux Falls City Attorney called Starr's leaving improper, but says it will likely not result in any disciplinary action. Kaylee, thank you for that. Sioux Falls City Council member Pat Starr is demanding the mayor and council chair Rick Kiley apologize following last night's vote on the $50 million mixed-use parking ramp downtown. The 13-story building will include more than 500 public parking spaces, 120 hotel rooms, and nearly 40,000 square feet of commercial space. Last night was the first time city council members heard public comment on the project. For nearly an hour, people came forward sharing their thoughts and Mayor Mike Huther ended public comment while people were still waiting to speak to the council, prompting Councilor Pat Starr to leave the room. He did not return for the vote on the project. We didn't hear from the developer of the project. We, I knew there were other people who had called me during the course of the day who wanted a chance to address the council and we chose not to hear from them and I didn't want to participate in something. If the constituents' voices can't be heard, I, my vo voice shouldn't be heard either. While Starr says it's time to move forward, he apologized to the people who didn't get to speak and called on the mayor and the council chair to apologize to them. In a statement, he wrote, quote, I value your opinions and wish that you could have been heard. With that being said, I am calling upon Mayor Huther and Council Chair Kiley to also apologize to those citizens wronged and to pledge it will not happen again. Mayor Huther responded to our request for comment this afternoon. He says he followed similar protocols in in other votes in the past. He also wrote, quote, one city councilor elected to serve the public even when not everyone agrees did not fulfill his role, which certainly proved disappointing, disheartening, and embarrassing to his peers, our citizens, and I. And we have not yet heard back from Council Chair Kiley. Turning to weather here at five o'clock, it However, she felt compelled to speak up for those who can't. While she won't lose her job, many women are afraid of being fired or criticized like Spawn has been for speaking out. I have legitimate concerns over not being taken seriously, which is really unfortunate, um, but I don't, I'm not afraid. Spawn says this Time article will only strengthen the movement to empower victims of harassment. I think the message that's being sent is loud and clear that women aren't going to tolerate this anymore. We don't have to tolerate it, and you don't have to be a celebrity to speak up and say, no, that's not okay. A message people are finally listening to. In Sioux Falls, Sammy Bieland, Kelloland News. Osman says her best advice if you are assaulted to seek professional help through a therapist or pastor. You can find a link to the Time article on Kelloland.com. Minnesota Senator Al Franken is expected to make an announcement tomorrow. The Democrat faces growing demands for him to resign 
following another woman who accused him of sexual misconduct. Franken's support among his party is collapsing. Yesterday, several female Democratic senators asked him to step down. And switching gears to weather, a few more areas got some snow today. Here's Chief Meteorologist Jay Trobeck. Ah, uh, yes, it did, Brady. Uh, mainly limited amounts, so there were some heavier stuff in the Black Hills. Lead got five inches of snow, for instance. Sioux Falls area, well, we've just had a lot. It's the most wonderful time of the year. $50 gift card for them, $10 bonus card for you. Only at Applebee's. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Give joy, get joy this weekend at Kohl's and get $10 Kohl's cash for every 50 spent. $50 million parking ramp in downtown Sioux Falls last night. But before the 6-1 to one vote that was made, the meeting was a pretty lively one. The parking ramp project has been a contentious issue these last few weeks. Tensions rose so high at the meeting last night, a council member left his seat and walked out of the room in the middle of discussion. It's too late. He's got yeah. to Councilor Starr. Yes, uh, he, it's improper procedure. Council member Pat Starr left the room following a roll call vote on the first agenda item pertaining to the parking ramp. In an interview after the meeting, Starr said he was upset that the mayor and council chair decided to short the public input period after about an hour in. People want to be heard. When citizens of Sioux Falls want to address their local government and have that opportunity, they're in the room to do it. It's the least we can do as a council is give them that opportunity to be heard. Starr says the decision to leave was symbolic to represent the citizen voices that were not being heard. His departure counted as abstaining from voting. The Sioux Falls City Attorney called Starr's leaving improper, but says it will likely not result in any disciplinary action. Thank you for that. Sioux Falls City Council member Pat Starr is demanding the mayor and council chair Rick Kiley apologize following last night's vote on the $50 million mixed-use parking ramp downtown. The 13-story building will include more than 500 public parking spaces, 120 hotel rooms, and nearly 40,000 square feet of commercial space. Last night was the first time city council members heard public comment on the project. For nearly an hour, people came forward sharing their thoughts and Mayor Mike Uther ended public comment while people were still waiting to speak to the council prompting Councilor Pat Starr to leave the room. He did not return for the vote on the project. We didn't hear from the developer of the project. We, I knew there were other people who had called me during the course of the day who wanted a chance to address the council and we chose not to hear from them and I didn't want to participate in something. If the constituents voices can't be heard, I, my vo voice shouldn't be heard either. While Starr says it's time to move forward, he apologized to the people who didn't get to speak and called on the mayor and the council chair to apologize to them. In a statement, he wrote, quote, I value your opinions and wish that you could have been heard. With that being said, I am calling upon Mayor Huther and Council Chair Kiley to also apologize to those citizens wronged and to pledge it will not happen again. Mayor Huther responded to our request for comment this afternoon. He says he followed similar protocols in in other votes in the past. He also wrote, quote, one city councilor elected to serve the public even when not everyone agrees did not fulfill his role, which certainly proved disappointing, disheartening, and embarrassing to his peers, our citizens, and I. And we have not yet heard back from Council Chair Kiley. Turning to... It doesn't matter where you live or where your business is located. If it's in Sioux Falls city limits, expect to see a lot less snow at the end of your driveway. Today, city leaders announced this winter they'll be using snow gates, not only in neighborhoods, but on some of the busiest streets in town. We're finding that it works very well for us on those streets because what we can do is put the gate down and go through the intersection and not put a windrow on the, on the intersection on those streets. Cause, so we're using snow gates on every street there is in the city of Sioux Falls. The city hasn't had a snow alert yet, but when it does, you could be the first to know. Just go to Kelloland.com. We've set up a link so you can receive an alert. Every year, veterans approached the Sioux Falls City Council last night to offer their input on the proposed downtown town parking ramp project. About an hour in, the mayor decided to end the public comment period, 
so counselors could discuss the project and vote. That decision struck a chord with at least one city council member, Pat Starr, the representative of the city's Northeast District, walked out of the meeting in protest. KLT's Andrew Anderson has the story. If nothing else, in a symbolic manner to uh, represent the other citizens who, whose voices weren't heard tonight. It was a startling move during Tuesday's city council meeting. Councilor Starr. Yes, uh, it's improper procedure. Councilmember Pat Starr leaves his chair after a vote is called regarding the parking ramp project. Starr said he made the decision to leave after Mayor Mike Huser cut short the public comment period. The, the mayor and our council leadership decided that an hour of public input was enough and we didn't want to hear from people who uh, took time out of their day to come and address the council. And I chose that uh, if their voice couldn't be heard, mine shouldn't be heard either. His departure counted as abstaining from voting. The city attorney called the action improper but says it likely will not result in any discipline. There are possible repercussions, but I'm willing to, to do what it takes. And someone who wants to bring an ethics violation or address the ethics board, um, I'm willing to, to do that. KDLT News reached out to the seven other city council members. Three declined to comment on Star's actions and two did not respond. Councilor Teresa Staley says she absolutely approves of Star action and totally supports him. Councillor Marshall Salberg issued a statement reading, As elected leaders of Sioux Falls, I believe we owe the people a professional dialogue on issues, particularly in our public meetings. Last night was a disappointing performance in that regard in a variety of areas. People complain all the time that they don't think they're heard by government. Well, we don't even give them a chance to, to uh, speak to us. That's even worse. Andrea Anderson, KDLT News. Now, council member Kylie did respond just a short time ago, calling Starr's walkout, quote, a dangerous precedent. Starr also released a statement this afternoon asking for Mayor Huther and Kylie to apologize to the citizens for cutting short the public input period. The mayor's office responded, saying, in part, the reality is that the citizens, the city of Sioux Falls employees, the city council, and the mayor did their part. However, one city councilor elected to serve the public, even when not everyone agrees, did uh, not fulfill his role, which certainly proved disappointing, disheartening, and embarrassing to his peers, our citizens, and to me. Democrats on